What up, fellas, ladies? Uh, this is my Pro Wrestling Noah, I believe, Shiny Navigation. Yeah, 2011. From uh, Kurokin Hall in Tokyo. Uh, 2,000 fans, roughly. Something like that. Maybe 2,100. Anyway, uh, I'm going with this title thing where I title every match. I think I did title every match something different because, I don't know. I wanted to build it better than Noah. I don't know, those, these crazy titles. If anyone thinks my titles are odd, uh, that's actually normal in Japan. So just remember that when you watch, just watch Wrestle Kingdom. These are strange titles, they're awesome. I mean, uh, my first match is going to kind of contradict that because it's called Strange Bedfellows. And you'll understand why. Tawei Akira and Ricky Marvin versus Mohamed Yone and Zack Sabre Jr. First thing you gotta think is, what the fuck are these guys teaming for? That's why it's strange bedfellows. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Marvin started using uh, more current shitty club music, which is a lot better than his last shitty club music. It's more hetero, anyway. I don't know. And uh, I don't know. This match didn't really do anything for me, and surprisingly, even the Kirk and crowd was kind of like, eh. eh. That that's that's what Noah. That's kind of what Noah. Uh, I don't know. Does the fans? I guess the main events are usually pretty good, but I don't know. Um. Yeah, I, I guess basically what I could say is this match left me feeling kind of empty. Basically, this match left me feeling more blank than Jessica Simpson at a Noam Chomsky lecture. Boom! Chomsky reference. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I couldn't score that maybe a zero, uh, not that it was really bad, it was just, what the fuck was it? I think I just spit. Alright, then we had, uh, what I call Kensuke Office is Burning. Kensuke Office of Sasaki Kensuke, uh, Mayahara Kento and Kajuara Satoshi versus Kobashi Kenta, Ogawa Yoshinari and... Onoe Masao. Um, this match started out surprisingly fast and with Kobashi and Kensuke, which was pretty cool. Uh, Kobashi's chest looked like, oh my god, it looked like the surface of, it looked like the surface of Mars, only fucking worse. And then Sasaki's had to look like the surface of the fucking moon and just, I don't know, it was, it was really good with those two in there. Was, the chop exchanges, you know, you're thinking, holy shit, uh, Kobashi's heart's going to stop. He's nearly crippled. But, you know, that doesn't really uh, stop him from wrestling. Hopefully he retires very soon. I'm not saying this because I don't like Kobashi. I love Kobashi. I just don't want to see him dead. I already saw it with Misawa. He went too long. I, I don't like to see that. All right, then we got, uh, what was it? Um, I think Onoe and Miyahara, which was... You know, the pace change, that's for sure. Uh, Otto is entertaining, he's just not, um, uh, he's not a good wrestler anymore. So, obviously that kind of had an effect. Um, then Ogawa, he was in, and which is weird because when Ogawa is the most athletic and healthy man on your team, and you get two other guys, you're not very fucking healthy. <laughs> How do we, you got him moving around like he has to take a, sh like he has to take a massive dump every five minutes, and... He looks like he's 65. He's probably only in his 40s. And, uh, yeah, Kobashi needs a fucking walker to chop people now. Just, I don't know, made Ogawa look almost, uh, good. Which is weird. Uh, you get Kajiwara, he just took the beating in the, uh, the, I don't even know if he's the younger guy, but he's the newest, uh, Kensuke office. So, yeah, he gets ass kicked the most. Uh, Suzaki. Definitely by far the most competent guy in this match, but you know, Otto did bring the comedy, which I liked. Uh, I was a little surprised by how much I liked this match. Actually, it was, uh, it was pretty entertaining. Uh, not based on wrestling alone, but uh, maybe forty-seven percent, close to fifty. I mean, that's not bad, especially for a match that has a guy who shouldn't even be fucking announcing. He's so fucked up. All right. Then we had the immovable objects versus the unstoppable force, the unstoppable forces, whatever you want to call them. Uh, Morishima Takeshi 
Bison Smith and Yoshi versus Akiyama Jun, Saito Akatoshi, and Sano Takuma. I get this at like a solid three stars, like 60%. Uh, basically, six gigantic men throwing bombs and kicking the shit out of each other. How could you not like it? And, and best of all, it was under 15 minutes, I believe. Uh, first, uh, first thing, uh, as soon as Akiyama got in, like, his team triple team Yoshi, they just went for the win. They went for the kill right away. And, and that plan backfired. Uh, Yoshi kind of got the edge, and then his team cut the ring in half and triple team Akiyama like he was a porn star. I mean, Akiyama got his ass beat by those guys for probably six minutes, maybe even longer. Uh, once Saito got in, he just absolutely wrecked Morishima's shit. I mean, that Saito is a killer. That's not the right word. I meant to say that, by the way. Uh, speaking of killer, Yoshi got murdered in the last five minutes or so. Just got dropped on his head and nailed with kicks and sickle of death and holy shit. Yeah. Alright, then we have a match. I don't even know how to score. I guess I would say it was fun. Uh, Tanaguchi Shuhei versus Colt. Boom, boom, Cabana. Which, it, it was really hilarious that the uh, the commentator couldn't say Colt, boom, boom, Cabana. It was like too much fucked up English coming out of it at one time. And, uh, it was like, Colt, the boom, boom, Cabana. That's like what it was. And uh, you had chance going. Cabana, and you know, and even a uh, boom boom Cabana. Uh, the crowd spoke better English than the fucking referee or the uh, commentator announcer. Um, the chance proved that Colt, I mean, entertainment doesn't have borders. If you're funny and you're entertaining, you're going to get over everywhere. Except for with white supremacists, they kind of hate Jews. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Tanaguchi was exposed by Cabana, in my opinion. Uh, the fun loving Gaijin was oh, so over the crowd. Tanaguchi got nothing, even when he dropped him on his head, just fucking brutalized him. It's basically Tanaguchi is like Al Snow, but less entertaining. Which uh, I'm not taking a, well, I'm kind of taking a shot at Al Snow, but who hasn't? I'm saying Al Snow. It, was kind of like, um, I don't know, without a head, he was kind of like nothing, like Karate Man, whatever. No matter what you threw at him gimmick-wise, he was always kind of plain, bland. I guess Steve Blackman would be a better example, but yeah. Uh, Tanaguchi is a good worker, a very good worker. I thought he was a future champion, but after seeing that charisma vacuum in there with Colt, um, no. No, you have to be entertaining too. You think Muto and Tanahashi, as much as I'm not a big fan, you think they got over it just because of pure skill? They got over because the crowd loves them. They have personality. They have something. You don't need to be good on the mic. You just have to have like some kind of charisma, some presence. I mean, Cena has it. Cena's a better wrestler than Tanaguchi. There you go. I said it. So Colt looked great. Tanaguchi looked like Elwood Blue's dinner which I've used many, many times. All right, then we have a match I call No Retreat, No Mercy. Um, yeah. This was a good match. 70%. Uh, it was Kenta, Kanemaru, Yoshinabu, and Genda versus Sugiera Takashi, Aoki Atsushi, and Ishimori Taichi. There was definitely some heat between... Kenta and Sugira, they have kind of a simmering rivalry, and apparently they're supposed to face one-on-one -on -one soon to see who's going to challenge the uh, winner of the main event. Um, yeah, they just went out there, and they're, they're, this match this match got going faster than Charlie Runkle in an office. Californication. All right. Uh, yeah, Kenta and Segura just beating the shit out of each other. Even when they weren't legal men, throwing each other out of the ring, slamming each other off steel tables, just going ape shit on each other. And then any time it was like Ishimori or something in the ring, you're just like, yeah, that's right. Spots don't entertain everyone that much. 
Uh, this match is just really exciting with Kent and Segura. Like I said, once they got in the ring, which was most of the match, they were either in or out there fighting. It was about three minutes when they weren't, and I was pretty much sleeping. But other than that, this is exhilarating. Just Kent and Segura alone. I mean, I can't wait for their match. It's going to be so good. It's going to be better than the first one, I think. There's more heat this time. Kent is a little bigger, stronger, faster. I, I legitimately would, I would think I would pick Kenta in a fight over Segura. I mean, if Kenta can break Shiozaki's ribs and knock out a bunch of heavyweights, and then he'll fuck up Segura, too. Look for Kenta. I think Kenta's going to... If a, any junior in the world deserves a world title, I mean, other than Daniel Bryan, it's got to be Kenta. All right, then we had our semifinal. I'm calling it Clash of the Kurikin. Suzuki versus Nakajima too. Suzuki Kotoro, the champion versus challenger Nakajima Katsuhiko. Uh, I had to get Booker T on this when I I was kind of I was really excited for this because uh, the first meeting, which was I believe the spring of this year. Holy oh, shit, I'm hungry. And uh, the, the, yeah, the first meeting was in spring and it was just ridiculous and awesome. Easily four stars, if not more. Um, yeah, I was just thinking, going into this match, I was like, Ah, uh, here we go! Just like Booker T. Just like Booker T. I was really into this match, and it, it delivered. Although it delivered very differently than one might think. Nakajima obviously came with the better haircut, which I guess gave him the edge. He just kept cutting off Suzuki, cutting him off. And at all points, he was even throwing elbows. He hit the blue destiny. I mean, this had to be going on for 10, 12 minutes where he just kept getting in the advantage. And then when you thought Suzuki was coming back, he would get cut off at some point. And it was just very unique. And it looked like Nakajima was going to, you know, take it kind of handedly. But then Suzuki started breaking him in half with elbows and hitting him in the gut when he was blocking the head. And, just get more unpredictable. You know, you got some head dropping, and man, Suzuki's face was thrust kicked in. He got his fucking head kicked in by Nakajima, and you know, Suzuki returned the favor by dropping him on his head. And it, was, it was just uh, really crazy, and towards the end, it was kind of elbows versus kicks, and then bam, like a shotgun. The ending came out of nowhere. It shocked me, it shocked everyone, it shocked the ref. I'm not going to tell you who won, but um, someone got knocked the fuck out. I think it was legitimate. And, uh, great finish. Great match. 82%. My, my dog's in that. Alright, then we had our final match. I'll call Flashing Brilliance versus Limitless Force, which it kind of was. Uh, for the GHC Heavyweight Championship, Shiozaki Go Champion versus Takayama Yoshihiro. The great big challenger. I get this you know, about four and three quarters, or three and three quarters. Sorry, jeez. Bordering on four. It definitely dragged about ten minutes too long. But the arm work from Takayama and how Takayama just brushed everything off and played with um, Go's hair like he was his little nephew or something, just smiling at him. It was just really great. And Takayama took it to the ground and he was doing some grappling and it was. Just, very unlike Takayama. Like, I know he has these skills, but he doesn't really use them. He usually just knees the fuck out of people, which you would expect, like maybe a 15 minute knee punch fest, but no, that didn't kick in until near the end. And uh, Shiozaki was in big trouble, probably getting dominated for about, ooh, 10 minutes straight. And then he brought out his secret weapon, which oddly enough was brawling and headbutts. It was like JYD in there. Just, you know. Shozaki got more aggressive, but Takayama was still the aggressor overall. Hit him with sick knees, hit him with this, kept going back in the arm, hit him with this. Uh, Shiozaki was on the apron, back face to uh, Takayama in the ring. Crabbed Shiozaki in a, butter, like a full Nelson, hit him with the full Nelson suplex right on his head. It was just brutal. I haven't seen a head drop like that in a while. And, uh, yeah, that and an Everest were not enough. And this kept going, and Shiozaki showed that he has not only fighting spirit, but testicles the size of Hawaiian coconuts. And this just brutal, violent punch vest with 
bone jarring head drops and lariats and at the end and it was just it's a very good match and both men look strong and yeah like I said it went about 10 minutes too long but if it would have been a little shorter they would have picked quick enough the pace at maybe the 15 minute mark instead of the 25 minute mark this could have been this could have been amazing but it's still very good like I said about three and three quarter stars if you want to go that route um yeah so what we have now is the winner of that match, which I can't tell you, you can find the answers that easy or you can watch it. And, um, yeah, it's going to be either the winner of Segura and Kenta versus the winner of Takayama and Go. It's going to blow your fucking mind, man. Both of those matches. All right, uh, I've been Sean. This has been my Noah review, and uh, you've all been enlightened or dumbed down or something. I don't know. By the way, uh, Occupy Wall Street, it's a good thing. Uh, if you don't know what it is, look it up. It's not some crazy left-wing like conspiracy thing. It's Wall Street fuck people, and there's people going to say, like, hey, you can't do that, man. We want justice. That's it. But some pepper spraying and unnecessary police brutality. Yeah, it's kind of like a news station here. No propaganda, though. Fucking hate that shit. All right. Enjoy the wrestling. Uh, I the show is other than the length of the main event. This show was pretty quick. I believe it was seven matches. The some of the most of the matches were like fifteen minutes or less. So, all right. Uh, enjoy uh, life and everything else. And uh, yeah, pro wrestling. No, not bad. Not bad. Next show should be better though. I'm out.